Daniel says, should I get a U mic one and a mini DSP two by four to get the most out of my system? Michael. It's going to take <laughs> some time to learn it, man. That's all I got to say. It's good. I'll be honest with you. It literally, it really changed the dynamics of the low end for my setup. Um, I was able to do, you know, I, I've got some major issues in my room. And part of it maybe because I'm putting, you know, my subwoofers directly behind my screen may not be the most optimal place, but that's where I've chosen to place them. And so to get the best performance out of them, the mini DSP was able to do something that, you know, talking about Odyssey earlier, Odyssey was not able to do, you know, but that is where you literally can go in and you can time align them, you know, and physically see with the, with REW what's happening, which, you know, which delay is going to perform the best in your room and in your setup and in that location, you know, so definitely, um, I highly recommend it, but like I said, it's a pretty steep learning curve. And so you're just going to need to have some patience. You know, it's not one of those things where you hit auto cal and then you've got this amazing sound. You're going to be dialing in some stuff. I had a guy that knew what he was doing and he literally spent four hours on the phone or, you know, and Ew, four, four hours, four hours dialing a good this friend thing right up. there. Seriously, man. Oh, but he loves it, though. You know, and that's the thing. He lives for this. So stuff. you're doing him a favor. Yeah. By literally. allowing him to. To mess with yours. <laughs> yeah. I'm allowing him to to just use his creativeness. I mean, because think about it. He's like, dude, look what I just did to Youth Man setup. I just took him to the next level. I know. He was probably super uh, excited. Yeah, absolutely, man. Great dude. Yeah, um, Chana, you don't have uh, too much experience with mini DSP yet, right? Okay. No, so no. What I would say to that is get it right away just because it's a fun learning experience, right? You really get to understand what your speakers are doing. When you use Odyssey, yeah, it gives you like a little graph and, uh, you know, a target response that's not really the, it's just a hope, wishful thinking. Right. But you want to see what your system is actually doing. You're going to need to mess around with a calibrated mic and REW. Yeah, right? yeah I got I got the mic. It's around here. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. To me, the mic right, halfway there. Halfway there. Yeah. Baby the stuff. Software is free. Mm -hmm. Right. Like so, the, the calibration mic is great because you get to see what's going on and, and you can play with some settings like, you know, your phase on your subwoofers or you can play with adjustments, but that's well, really, would, would I need to do that yeah. because my subwoofers are stacked? Uh, sitting on top I would want to know if I were you, I'd want to know yeah. if I were anybody, I'd want to know what my speakers are actually doing Sure. in my, or, you know, of course there's a, thing. there's a method to how you, you measure as well. Yeah. And so you can get real bad measurements if you don't do it correctly. Also, would I, would I measure at my main listening position? Just to, you would probably want to do that. Also, you want to measure ah. up close to see what's going on. You want to see what's going on. You know, so that's what the speakers are actually doing or kind of, it's not anechoic, but whatever you measure up close and then you want to sit down and see what is it doing over here? Maybe it lost all the base or maybe it, you know, what, what happened? And so you want to compare those things. Um, yeah, I mean, I would definitely uh, invest. Oh, here's another example, right? So I have a, a sub in for review. And so like some of these subs, a lot of subs do this uh, where it's very peaky, right? Boom. So it goes up and maybe, you know, 60, 70, 80 hertz. It's just like, right? <laughs> it's like the hi-fi summit right there. Like the summit, right? Boom. And so what happens is it's hard to get a nice, uh, transition from your main speakers to that sub because as soon as it transitions boom it you know it has this huge peak and so what will happen is let's say if i take that same sub and i throw it onto my system and i let odyssey kind of you know figure it all out now uh this particular sub that i'm testing out can hit really you know pretty high spls you know like it's capable it's a capable sub so you'd expect like it doesn't hit 20 hertz at minus 3 db Right. And so that's a problem for me, but it could just that, you know, it's just that the, you know, 60, 80 hertz peak is so high, like 20 decibels up. Right. So when, when Odyssey tries to calibrate it, it just says, well, I don't think it can do 20 hertz. Right. Because it's so low on there. So what it'll do, I think I said this before, but it'll basically think that that sub can't hit 20 hertz. And when it calibrates it, it just flattens it out cuts off the peak but it doesn't let it go down to 20 hertz mm. but but 
what you <clears> could do is let's say if you were to calibrate it first with mini DSP and then you made it flat, right? You made it flat and tell it like, so when Odyssey finally does a calibration, it says, oh, I can hit 20 hertz. Let me just kind of, you know, make it match the rest of the speakers. So in that case, you would need a mini DSP to get the most out of that sub.